Hello, my gorgeous creative lovelies. Today in the studio, we're continuing the series of alternative surfaces to UPO by going with episode five, part two, Clay with a Caveat. Real quick, I wanted to show you, though, I had mentioned how well alcohol inks perform on polymer clay, and here's just an example of how wonderful they perform. So using alcohol inks on polymer clay is a great idea. I also wanted to show you real quick the coral from Jacquard's Pinata brand and Ranger brand are exactly the same. So save your money. You don't need both corals from both brands. Now here's our secret ingredient today, Kelpie by Kilty Inks. It's a new product, but we're going to use two coats to cover the outside of our bowl, which I did off camera. So there are two coats of Kelpie on the outside of our of our uh, paper clay, air dry clay. Um, the reason I had to do that was because the paper clay absorbs the ink rather than letting it sit on the surface. So I used the, the Kelpie to help, oh, help make that not happen. There's some English for you. <laughs> Yay, Catherine. So by using the Kelpie or even um, you could try gesso or you could also use um, gloss medium, um, like a golden gloss medium, and that will also repel the inks so and make them sit on the surface. Now, the other bowl that I made um, when I lost all that footage was by Montmart Air Dry modeling clay and you don't need to use any sort of surface coating on that clay. That clay works fine by itself. So I've applied these inks just randomly and now I'm going to dry them real quick with my dryer. Um, I didn't use any sort of method to apply the inks. I just squirted them out randomly all over the bowl and they kind of landed where they fell fell where they landed they just stayed there but I decided that the bowl was a little too dark so I'm using some 91% alcohol to lighten the bowl up and again I'm not doing anything special I'm just kind of dripping it on wherever it falls that's where it stays and it's creating some really cool patterns almost like little circles um not perfect circles, but really organic, neat looking circles. You can see all over the sides and the bottom of the bowl. So I'm using my dryer again to dry the alcohol inks and the alcohol just a little bit more. And I love the way this is looking, but I think it's lacking something. You know that I'm a bling fiend and I must have as much bling as I can possibly get my hands on. So let's look at continuing to dry the the bowl and it does look really cool I do really like it like this and it would have been perfect just to leave it alone like this and that would be totally fine you could you could do that and it's a gorgeous little bowl but like I said I need a little more bling so we're gonna dry this a bit more just so that it's consistently dry all over and there are parts of it that are a little bit tacky but not really so let's add some foil, and I'm just rubbing the foil on. No, I don't do it that fast in real life. This is sped up. Um, I don't want to waste your time, and I know that this is a two-part video, so I'm trying to make this as quick as I can. But when you pull the foil off, you can see the remnants that it left behind, and it left kind of this all-over glitter sparkle type look that I really enjoy. So I'm applying it to the sides of the bowl, and it really just, all you do is put the foil down and rub it pretty hard with your fingers. Rub it firmly and quickly so that you create a little bit of heat. And it will stick mostly to where the alcohol inks haven't completely dried yet. But it will kind of stick randomly all over. So you just keep applying it all over the bowl until you get the whole bowl covered. There, that looks pretty good. Hopefully you can see some of that bling and sparkle. Now let's use the quickie glue, which I love from Sakura. And 
I'm going to trace some of these shapes with the the fine point of this glue applicator. This isn't the only glue that'll work, but I find that it works well and it dries quickly and it dries clear. Um, I think normally it dries with kind of a blue tint on it, but it seems to work pretty well on this on this bowl with alcohol inks. So I'm using the quickie glue to randomly trace some of these shapes. The hard part is remembering where you've applied the glue when you go back to foil. So I don't want to, that's why I'm not applying glue to the entire bowl and then going back to foil because I wouldn't be able to remember where I had glued and where I hadn't. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm keeping my thumb um, of my left hand down toward the spot where I glued first just so that I know where to place the foil when it comes to laying the foil down and I'm going to do that here in just a second. I'm going to trace a little bit more of the shapes and you can see how easy this is and for such incredible results anybody could do this. Truly anyone. This is so simple. There we go. That looks pretty good. So let's grab the foil and you can tell this isn't a new sheet of foil. So, and it doesn't need to be. I keep using these sheets of foil until there's barely anything left because as long as there's foil on it, you can just move the foil around. You know, as long as there's color, you can continue to move the foil around and just use it until it's, it's a clear sheet of cellophane. So I am sticking the foil down to where I kind of remember placing the glue. It's a little bit difficult to remember and it doesn't show. So it's hard to figure that out, but I'm doing a pretty good job. And I like how this leaves kind of a veining look. I'm really into that look. And so I like how by, by using the quickie glue, and different spots, it makes it look almost like veins of foil, veins of gold running through this blue and kind of coral bowl. I guess it turned mostly blue. You can't really see much of the coral, but I really like how it turned out. I like the, the variation of color, and I like that the colors mixed so well together. There wasn't one that was really light and the rest of them were dark. I just really like how this turned out. I like using those colors together. So, and I listed the colors at the beginning of the video. I think it was coral, laguna, and aquamarine. And I will also list the colors or try to remember to list the colors in the description box. And if you are enjoying the video, if you would please, please subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit the bell so you're notified of future videos, I'd really appreciate it. And you will be reminded of great content that's coming up because I do have a few more videos coming up in this Alternative Surfaces to You post series. We're not quite done with this series yet. In fact, I have one that's going to be really exciting. So we're going to compare surfaces um, to see which surface is the best for applying alcohol inks when you're not using UPO. So it's not going to be what you think. It's going to be really exciting, and I think it'll take your art in a whole new direction, I hope. So make sure that you hit that bell and you subscribe so you know when these great videos are coming. So I'm still just continuing to add bits of glue here and there. There's no pattern. There's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm really just laying the, the glue down in different spots. We're going to dry the glue a little bit. I'm impatient. So impatient. <laughs> and then we're going to foil over the glue spots that we just laid down, just like we did for the rest of the bowl. It's very simple. And I didn't do this on the bottom of the bowl um, just because you don't see the bottom of the bowl and I felt like it wasn't necessary. 
but this is something you're going to want to seal. So once you're done decorating your bowl with the foil and the alcohol inks, definitely seal it with the Kmar varnish. Um, I do two coats of that, two light coats, and then I use a UV clear acrylic spray and do another couple quick coats. But you don't need to use the gloss varnish if you don't want to, the gloss spray. You can always use a matte. It's totally up to you. So here you can kind of see that I've made several circles of wire going around just laying on the top of the bowl. I sized them to the bowl and I think I did three or four circles. And the video is going to be a little bit choppy here because see there's so the wire was so long it was difficult to get it together to show you how I'm doing this. So what I'm doing is poking the wire. I've doubled the wire up and I'm poking it in the hole, and I should have used a stronger wire. I think this is 22 gauge. I should have used a heavier wire, but this was the only gold that I had that wasn't really heavy, so we went with this. So you poke it through the hole and flatten it to the bowl on the outside, and then take the doubled wire and slide it back through so that it goes down through the stitch that you just made on the outside of the bowl. You can see I'm having a little bit of difficulty because the wire is so thin. But you just feed it through that stitch and pull it down, making sure that you don't have any tangles or bends in your wire. So you pull it taut, and then you pull it around to make your next stitch. Very simple. So you're going to want to take that doubled wire. Oh, once you get the kinks out of the wire, it's really important not to have any bends or kinks in the wire. Number one, they don't look very good. But number two, they could break, especially using this thin wire. When you pull it taut, you don't want it to break. So you just straighten those out and then you pull your stitch down to the bowl poke your doubled wire through, pull your stitch taut, come back around from the top, feed it through the stitch that you just made, feed it under there, pull that taut, and this is how we're holding those rings at the top of the bowl that I made. That's how we're holding these down. And you just keep repeating that until you get to the end. And I've reached the end, so I take the two tails and just wrap them around each other. Very simple. But that keeps the bowl secure. That keeps the wire secure around the bowl. And then you'll grab all the tails together in one little bunch and grab your wire cutters and cut those tails off. And then just take the twisted wire that you have left on the bowl and bend it back to the bowl, making sure that it's not sharp and it doesn't poke anyone. And that will be the back of your bowl. Very simple. And look how beautiful that is. Well, you can't really see it, but there we go. It's a beautiful little bowl. So I'm really glad that you guys joined me. I hope that you enjoyed the two-part process. I hope it's something that you're going to try. It's very simple and very fun. And you wind up with a beautiful little bowl at the end. I'm glad you joined me. I had a lot of fun doing the video for you. If there's something you'd like to see, I hope you let me know in the comments. Also, drop any questions or, or anything that you have to say in the comments. And I hope that you enjoyed this. I'm glad that you joined me. I will see you in the next video. Bye.